Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from Step by Step Painting, and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint Halloween friends. Super fun, but super detailed Halloween painting. And let's go over colors and brushes. So seven colors for this tutorial. I use Hooker's Green Hue Permanent Mars Black, Titanium White, Quinacridone Magenta, Dioxazine Purple, Cadmium Orange Hue, and Primary Yellow. I used four brushes for this, a three quarter flat brush, a number four round brush, a number eight round brush. These three are in the Princeton Velvet Touch pack of brushes that I like to recommend. And this little guy is a three zero round brush. It's a tiny detail brush. You can use any tiny brush you might have available or even a paint pen. This was used mostly for some of the very small details of this painting. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm working on an 11 by 14 canvas and I have it positioned horizontally. I am gonna go ahead and mark three and a half inches from the bottom of the canvas. And I'm going to, with a regular drawing pencil, I'm gonna draw a kind of a curved line. There's sort of this hill thing going on in the background of this painting. And it starts at about three and a half inches and ends at a three, three and a half inches and just kind of elevates a little bit. So just sketch a very, light curved line across your canvas. So that's going to help divide where the sky and the land is. Next, we're gonna load our three quarter flat brush in the water and I'm gonna distribute this into the dioxazine purple. This is this dark purple. So I'm gonna load my brush with the purple. I'm gonna start at the top of the canvas and start applying this paint, kind of um, sloppily applying this paint little tiny bit of water in there helps to get that paint to flow just a little bit better but I call these X style strokes I'm just kind of like flip-flopping my brush slapping this paint on the canvas um, if you want to do more of a smooth um, application you can do like these left and right strokes across the canvas but I want to try to get these to go kind of curved because we have our hill line at the bottom so our colors and our sky are going to kind of like contour with that and curve with that line so I'm going to go down almost halfway maybe about a quarter of the sky is filled up with this purple and without rinsing the brush I'm going to grab my quinacridone magenta that's that um like the kind of bright warm violet color and I'm gonna apply this below using the same kind of paint strokes these X style expressive strokes and that's going to blend with my purple so I'm allowing that paint to touch the purple and go over the purple and it's blending wet on wet on the canvas so we have a lot of these choppy strokes in the sky and if you don't like how choppy that looks you can always just kind of go back with your brush and smooth them out a little bit more i'm going to go down to almost to the bottom and then grab my white without rinsing and same thing apply that white um, just be careful with that titanium white it's going to spread fast and take over so little bits of white at a time is all that's necessary we're gonna go all the way to that hill line and my hill line is going to disappear because I'm going over that line, but that's okay. We can always paint our green back over that where we overlapped that line. But see how our sky just got gradually lighter as we worked our way down to our horizon line. So we have light on the bottom and dark at the top. Lots of choppy strokes. So what we can do, if we want to kind of smooth these strokes out so we can go back. I'm applying more of this magenta so I don't put too much white up here. But we can go back and kind of smooth some of this out very gently. I can make my strokes go more smooth in a curved direction. I can even add more dioxazine purple to my brush at the top and let that blend more at the top. But that's how I ended up smoothing that all out. But I don't still want it to look kind of um, choppy and messy altogether. Anyway, it's a Halloween painting. I was going for more of the spooky Halloween sky. And then I'm going to grab more of this darker purple up here, apply that, kind of blend it a little bit at the top. 
If I want to, I can paint the sides of the canvas too. And I'm just kind of smoothing that out at the top, but trying not to overwork it. I don't want to eventually make everything the same, same color. I still want it to be dark at the top and light towards the bottom. Maybe a little bit more white down here at the bottom. I'm gonna make sure that everything above that line that we drew is covered so I don't have to go back and repaint anything after I add the hill. So when you're done with all of this, you wanna go ahead and rinse your brush off and let's load Hooker's Green Hue onto our palette. I'm going to paint the hill. You do not need to wait for the sky to dry to do this step. So rinse it off. It makes a really pretty purple color in your water. And then let's grab our green. So what I like to do with this green sometimes is add a little bit of this magenta or purple into it. Kind of makes it more of a natural looking green, but also kind of makes it a little bit darker. So we want to kind of do what we did with the sky, but make it dark on the bottom and light at the top. So I'm going to paint maybe about half or a little bit more than half of that hill. Full strokes, big strokes that go from one end to the next in a curved direction. And then grab your titanium white. So again, only grabbing little tiny bits of that white because that white will spread very fast. And this is going to allow our green to get lighter at the top. So we're painting in that curved direction and see how I'm going over that sky. So if you need to extend your hill up a little bit higher, that's okay. But our ground gets lighter in the distance, kind of just disappears into the sky and it's dark at the bottom. And if we need to, we can go back on the bottom of this and add more green at the bottom. We got a little streak of purple in there, but that's okay. So let's let this dry just a bit before going to the next step. I'm going to completely rinse my brush off and I'm going to be switching to a number eight round brush and adding Mars black on my palette. I'll be painting the tree next. And so there's our Mars black. This number eight is. I find this a really good brush for painting trees because we can do thick and thin all in one stroke. And I'll show you what I mean by this if you've not seen me paint trees with this brush before. So load your brush in the water. I like to keep some of that water on that brush and distribute that into the black to kind of loosen the paint up a little bit. And so right here I'm using mostly the tip of the brush to kind of sketch out the base of that tree. So it starts out fluting kind of outwards and then you can kind of sketch the trunk as it goes up vertically and it gets more narrow as it goes towards the top and splits into separate branches. I can also start filling this in as I'm sketching it out. Some people like to sketch out the tree first and then fill it in. So I'm gonna go up. It's almost like it made this triangle shape and then it goes up. So the edges are a little bit wavy and not exactly perfectly vertical. And as I paint these branches, I can kind of put more pressure on the brush for thicker branches. So that branch just went off the canvas. And this branch is gonna go to the right. So with this brush, I can use light pressure if I want my branch to go thinner and put more pressure on the brush if I want my branch to be thicker. So I can extend this out. So see how that started out thick? And then that goes thinner because I'm using mostly just the tip of the brush to make it go thinner. And so this is a Halloween tree. So I'm gonna try to get my branches to be a little bit more wavy. And I'm gonna do more branches that are going kind of horizontally, but wavy. So like right here, a little kind of stretching 
towards the right in the painting, but going wavy. And so those wavy lines, I'm using mostly just the tip of the brush. And I'm not doing a lot of pressure for the tip. When you load the brush, you can kind of twist your brush when you're loading it onto the bristles. And I'm just gonna keep adding as many branches as you want. This next step is optional, but what I like to do if I'm doing like a silhouette tree, I like to add a little bit of highlight to it so it's not just pure black shadow. But again, if you want to skip this step because it looks a little advanced, you are definitely welcome to skip this step. So what I did just now was I mixed a gray on my palette, so black and white, kind of like a medium light gray color. I'm just taking the same brush and I'm very loosely doing this just on the right side. So I know my moon, my bright yellow moon is gonna be on the right side, so it would be reflecting light towards the right side of my branches. So I'm just loosely adding this in here. A lot of this black is still wet, so it is blending a little bit. But even if this was dry, you can still do this step. But just adding that little bit of brightness on the right side gives your tree a little bit more depth. And it also, the, um, also gets the branches to stand out a little bit better against some of the dark background in the sky. And it provides texture in the tree too. So I did more like loose, vertical, wavy lines on the trunk. Gave it a little bit of texture in that area. We are going to draw our Halloween characters next. And for this, I used a white chalk pencil. If you don't have a white chalk pencil, you can use a regular drawing pencil. Because these drawings are a little bit more intricate, I don't really recommend using a regular piece of chalk because of how thick the chalk is, but you can try it with chalk too. I started with our skeleton over here on the right, and I'm going to draw the head first. So I find skeletons to be kind of intimidating to draw and paint at first but actually quite simple if you break it up shape by shape, line by line. And so our head is well above our horizon line here. So I'm doing almost like a light bulb shape. So like a circle with like a, a little kind of oval shape that dips down. So for the skull of our skeleton. And then we can do the spine. So I did a vertical line. This line actually ended up being kind of a curved line. You're also welcome to change the direction of the arms and legs for your skeleton. Lots of different fun variations you can do here. And then the ribs, so I did little kind of curved horizontal lines. I did four, you can do more or less. We are keeping this simple because we have three different characters in our painting. We don't have to go into super realistic details here. And then we can do the pelvis. So this is kind of like a butterfly shape. So I can do two curvy lines, two curves kind of going downwards. And then so for the arms, think, or the arms and legs, think stick figure at this point. We don't need to draw the detail of the bone. We can do just stick figure style for now. When we paint this in, we can add more detail. So I did two segmented legs and arms, stick figure like. And for the feet, I did two ovals. So again, you don't have to make your skeleton look like that. You can move the arms and make them go in different directions. Move the leg, make the leg go in different directions. I did a little oval on the top of his head a little kind of cylinder shape to get the hat drawn in. And he's gonna have a little bow tie. It's fun to look at clip art of skeletons. You can look at different clip art and do different variations of this. A little simple oval mouth nose, very, very basic. So I'm not going into any more details with that. I'm gonna move along to the ghost. Our ghost is very easy, so it's just a like a curved, long 
vertical shape. This is also something you can look at clip art for different ideas that you want to do. And then two eyes, a bow. I debated for the longest time whether or not to do a mouth on the ghost, but for now we're just doing two eyes. And then our pumpkin topiary. Act like you're drawing a snowman right now. So we have three circles all on top of each other, slightly overlapping, so small, medium, and large circle. When I painted this in, I ended up changing the, the size of this. It, this guy ended up being smaller than what I'm drawing it in as, just FYI. And then our hat kind of overlaps at the top. We can change the arms on this too. So if you want your arms going in different directions, maybe your characters are all doing the same dance move. And again, not doing any more details on this pumpkin topiary. But I'm gonna do the fence. We can draw a kind of a spooky fence in here. So I did three vertical posts that have a triangular top to them. I'm just sketching this out with the pencil. So we have two horizontal beams. And there is our basic drawing. We're going to go ahead and start painting this in. So I'm going to start with the skeleton. And I'm going to use the number four round brush and titanium white. I'm going to start by painting the head. So again, we're just gonna take this shape and line by line. It's actually very, very simple. So obviously I covered my head up or my facial features up. When that white dries, I can go back and add his mouth and eyes and nose. I did the spine and then each of the rib bones. If you wanna curve them the opposite direction, you can. And so, so far it's basically just painting in what we drew. Can paint the pelvis in. So I'm gonna leave two circle openings on this. We could also just paint it in solid white and then go back and do black circle openings. I'll show you, there's one over here and one over here on the right. And then when we start painting the leg bones and arm bones in, I'm going to do something different. So I'm going to make the line thicker, but I'm going to do, see how I did the two little kind of curves to make that more of a bone shape. So a little curve, little curve. And I do that just by pressing a little bit more down on the bristles of the brush. So it makes like each of those lines that we drew look like bones and our line, actual line is thicker. So I'm gonna do that with each of the arms, and legs, and feet. And so for the toes, I just do five little dots. You can do six dots if you want more, or four dots. And same thing for the rest of him. Like I said, you can change the placement. If you want him to be doing a different dance move, you can. I did another version of this. So my skeleton was slightly different on the written tutorial. So you can look at that if you want to change how he is standing. I'll go back and make things a little bit thicker. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the arms that I did with the legs. Make the little, two little curved notches on the bottom to make that look like a bone. And then I didn't draw the hand on this, but the hand is basically the same, almost the same as the foot, only it's 
more of a rounded shape instead of an oval shape. So do this bone. And then, so like a rounded shape. And then our thumb, gonna go inwards. Our thumbs are facing on the inner parts, little. And then the actual finger part, finger pieces are a little bit longer. So five hands, fingers, four fingers and a thumb. Um, so we have to let this dry before adding any more details to this, such as painting the hat and bow tie. And then I actually also did some black outlining, a little bit of black outlining on the skeleton as well. So I'm gonna paint the ghost next. And the ghost, I use the same brush. This is the number four round brush and titanium white. I'm gonna start by pretty much kind of outlining the ghost with the tip of the brush. And as I paint her in, I'm gonna end up covering the eyes and that's okay. But I wanna paint going in kind of this vertical direction. And I'm gonna paint this pretty solid. Um, if you want to make her look kind of sheer translucent you can do this kind of dry brush style to have some of that background showing through but I wasn't really going for that look so I did it relatively solid but everything in the middle is all vertical strokes which is going to help when we do some of these um, some of the shading down here so once you fill her in go ahead and make like a light gray on your palette and we're gonna do a little bit of like shading down here. So I'm gonna take this gray and just kind of do these like lines that sort of divide up towards the bottom. Maybe it kind of like curls over here. So kind of curve this down here to make it look like it's kind of curling up. And this also. And then add a little bit more black to your brush. Make it just a little bit darker. I'm gonna go in here a little bit at the bottom. With that little bit darker color at the bottom. This is kind of blending with our white that's already on the canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse and go back to using just the white. So I'm gonna load my brush in just the white. I'm gonna go back and add this white down here, kind of blend this up a little bit very loosely. Curved strokes right here and little curved strokes towards the bottom over here. Vertical strokes going upwards. Extend this down a little bit. We have that, looks like there's wrinkles of a blanket at the very bottom. These are curved. And then I'm gonna go back and add a little bit more gray towards the top. So very loose, wavy sort of lines up here, but not as dark as the bottom area. And then I can always go back over some of that with more white. Right here, very loose. Next, let's load our palette with cadmium orange hue, and we are going to do the pumpkin next. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up and try to simplify this a bit. Let's start by simply painting our circle without any shading or highlighting yet. So I'm just gonna use my brush to kind of outline the shape of the circle. 
Now I did mention when I was drawing this that I'm going to change it so he's shorter. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not filling in what I drew. I'm making him not as tall. So as I'm doing this, the circle right here is shorter. So fill in the circle first, then grab your titanium white without rinsing the brush. Start in the middle, and this is gonna blend very quickly. And you're gonna do like this oval in the center of that pumpkin. I'm gonna add more white to my palette. And load white. So there's our oval. Add a little bit more white in there so that it would stand out. And then each of these, I'm just going to stroke downwards. This is going to blend, but I don't want to keep stroking downwards because then it's just going to kind of blend all the way together. So I'll do two or three strokes downwards. Stroke downwards a couple times and stroke downwards. So that white blending with the orange made it so that pumpkin has a little bit of texture and um, shape. I'm going to do the same thing again to pumpkin number two. So start by painting an orange circle. The orange circle overlaps that bottom circle. And with these pumpkins, we want to start in the center. So grab the white, paint an oval in the center. Grab the white, stroke down, stroke down, stroke down. We want this to blend with the orange and stroke down. And that's going to give us our pumpkin texture. We'll do the same thing up here. Circle, solid orange circle. The drawing part will erase, by the way. After we're done painting and letting it dry, we can erase any of that chalk still showing, that chalk drawing. Oval in the center with the white. Stroke down, stroke down. You might notice that it's just blending too much and it's only showing up a little bit. So we can combat that by um, outlining some of that later with black and our tiny detail brush. Well, what I'm going to do next is, so I did the highlighting part, I'm going to do some shadowing. And while that's drying a little bit, I'm actually going to take my eraser and kind of erase around there, but try not to smudge any of my orange. Then I want to create some shadowing in this. So I'm going to go ahead, make sure my full round brush is all rinsed off. And I want orange and green. So to make the shadow for this, I'm going to actually add a little bit more green to my palette here. I'm going to mix about equal parts orange and green together. Maybe a little bit more orange. Just so it becomes kind of, it's going to look almost like a brown color. And I'm going to take that and at the bottom, I'm going to stroke upwards to create some shadowing. So right here at the top, I'm going to stroke downwards. Over here at the top, I'm going to stroke downwards. And over here at the bottom, I'm going to stroke upwards. I actually went back and that one had more orange than that green on there. But this just gives our pumpkin a little bit more color. A little bit more shadow. And this I'm going to stroke upwards. And we can always go back and re outline things with black. When we put the face on here, it'll look just fine. I just want to try not to overdo my highlighting and shading. So I'm just going back with the white, kind of making some of those parts stand out a bit better. Maybe over here on the right side, it has more of a highlight. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush off and I'm painting the moon next. So let's load our palette with primary yellow. And you'll need some fresh titanium white if you don't have any titanium white left on your palette. So using the number four round brush, let's mix yellow and white together. So equal parts yellow and white mixed together. It's going to make a light yellow color. I'm going to paint a circle, a small one inch circle. And I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to smear it outwards. This is going to create 
that glow in the sky. You can even take two fingers, kind of smear it outwards. It gives you that kind of dry brush, see-through glow. And then go back with just white. This is actually white and yellow, but a little bit more white. And repaint a circle in the center of that. A little bright white circle right in the center. It's going to make it look like you have a really bright glowing moon in the sky. Next, we are going to start adding details to each of our Halloween characters, starting with the skeleton and then working our way to the right, to the topiary. And so I'm going to mix a light green on my palette. I'm mixing primary yellow with the hooker's green hue. You can even add a little bit of white in there if you want. This is going to create a pretty kind of lime green color. So that's the color I'm going to do for his hat. I'm going to start with the bottom piece, the little oval elliptical shape that overlaps the top of his head. And I'm going to add more green in there and do some color variation in that hat. So a little bit of dark green at the top. So I'm just painting in the hat, little vertical strokes and a curved stroke at the bottom. You can do a little bit of dark green shadowing on the left. Then I'm going to paint his bow tie in, same color, with that light lime green. You are definitely welcome to customize this painting and change the colors and little details in it. It's a little circle in the center, two triangular shapes on each side using the same color, and this is still the number four round brush. If at this point you feel like you need to switch to a smaller round brush, you are definitely welcome to change to a different brush. So right now I'm going to switch to the 3 slash 0 tiny detail brush to paint the eyes, nose, mouth. You can also do this step with a black paint pen. So I have that dipped in Mars black. I'm going to do two ovals for the eyes. I'll do a little upside down heart shape for his nose and a basic smile for the mouth. It's such a small shape, it's gonna be hard to fit these teeth in, but I'm gonna do little vertical lines going up and a horizontal line going across for the teeth. Then I can do some outline work on here. So I can do a little bit of outlining on the bow. That really helps that to stand out. If I want, I can outline some of the hat, specifically on the left. Sometimes when I do outline work, I don't outline the entire object. I outline some of it. And then you can decide if you like this or not. I did a little bit of outlining work on some of the bones and it helped to create a little bit of contrast and detail with our skeleton. So I did some outlining a little bit on the pelvis, the rib cage, on some of the bones on the left side of the bones. Since the right side is brighter from the moon reflection, so I just did the left side outlining and I did little polka dots on the bow tie. So I did little black dots. I also did a black band on the top part of the hat. And I outlined the very top oval shape on the top of his hat. 
Next, I am going to do the eyes on the ghost. So using this brush, I'm gonna do two ovals and those are slightly slanted inwards towards each other. And then for her bow, I decided to do a pink bow, but there might be some conflict with the background color. So I'm actually gonna add orange into my pink. So I mixed quinacridone magenta with titanium white. That made a pink color. Then I added a little bit of orange in there. Kind of loosen this up a little bit with some water. So it's kind of like a dark coral color instead, just because it's the same color as the background and we want it to stand out. So again, you are welcome to change the color of this bow or not do a bow, depending, or you can do flowers, whatever you want to do with this. I'm going to rinse the number four round brush and I'm actually going to touch up the top of her head it ended up making it look like there's like a little bump on the top right i will move my hand so you can see what i'm doing here but <laughs> i just extended that up slightly can't really work around the bow so we're just going to let it be like that i could outline the bow with the black and the little detail brush so i am outlining that and little tiny diagonal lines on the base of those triangles. And next we can detail our pumpkin topiary. And let's start by doing some outlining with the black. So this is what I was talking about earlier when we were trying to shade and highlight this in so we can actually take this and I'm not outlining all of those lines on the pumpkin, just the top and bottom. See, I'm just kind of stroking upwards and letting that line just kind of disappear. So that is going to allow your pumpkin to have a little bit more shape. So just those bumps on the bottom, a curvy line, stroking upwards. You don't want to do too much black outlining because we have the face and the witch hat. I'm actually going to draw the witch hat out with this detail brush, starting with the bottom part of the hat. So I let that kind of overlap the top part of the pumpkin head. And I'm just going to sketch this out so that the hat curls around and goes down to a point. And then I can do the face. So simple jack-o'-lantern face. I'm doing two triangles for the eyes. I'm filling them in after I draw them. You can also do this step with a paint pen. So if you have a fine detail black paint pen, that would be really helpful for this. I did a circle for the nose and then the mouth. So I kind of sketched out the mouth, little pointed triangular teeth, two at the top. And I'm gonna start filling it in, solid black. So you can see how if we did too many lines on the pumpkin, how it would have kind of interfered with the face part. If you want, you can just do the pumpkin lines on the bottom two pumpkins and none on the top one. That way it wouldn't look too busy with too much black lines. I actually close that mouth at the bottom. For painting the witch hat in, I'm gonna switch back to my number four round brush and Mars black. And I'm just gonna paint that shape in solid black. Then for the arms, I'm going to go back to my 3-0 tiny detail brush 
If you want, you can use brown for this step or make a brown by mixing orange and green together and adding a little bit of white in there, but I'm okay with just doing black right here. I'm doing a tree branch for an arm, and we can have the other arm going down, make it look like he is dancing. I am also going to add a little bit of highlighting to the face, so the eyes, nose, and mouth. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to rinse the detail brush, grab titanium white, and just on the right side, I'm going to add a little white line right here in the circle, a little white curve. I'm going to give it almost like a three-dimensional effect here on the right. Mouth was a little tricky because it's kind of an intricate area. It kind of lost the shape there with that adding that white. So I'm actually going to add the white on all sides and go back with the black right here. There we go. And next, I'm going to add some texture and shadowing on the ground. So let's grab our four round brush. Let's use the hooker's green hue, so the green, and add a little bit of black to it. So this is green with a teeny bit of black. And I'm just taking my brush and I'm doing these very kind of loose left and right strokes to create shadows under our characters. The shadows are going kind of diagonally to the left because where the moon is shining, the shadow would be going the opposite direction. This is going to give your characters a little bit more like they're on the ground. The ghost did not get a shadow left, but I'm going to add one kind of later. Debated whether or not the ghost should actually have a shadow. So I left her without a shadow for now. And let's do the fence. So the fence, I'm using Mars Black and the number four round brush. I'm actually going to use this ruler to kind of make sure my fence is kind of lined up on the ground. Um, because it's a Halloween spooky fence, it actually would benefit us to make it not so perfect and diagonal and wobbly and all weirdly shaped. For the little triangle pieces at the top, I used some switching back and forth between the detail brush and the four round brush. So the detail brush is good for getting those intricate lines in, but not good for filling things in solid, unless it's a really small shape that you're filling in. And then we have our two horizontal beams going across our fence. I'm using the number four round brush for this. If it's helpful, you can use a ruler to help with your line, but you don't need to. Then I'm going to grab some titanium white on my little detail brush and on the right side and on the top parts of the fence. So right here on the top of the horizontal posts, little white line. And then on the right side of this, I guess technically it can be on either side. And then back to our four round and our green black for shadows. I'm going to take this. This is done very, very lightly, almost dry brush style. So it's just very loosely kind of like wiggling my brush back and forth to create that shadow. The next detail we are going to do in this painting is add leaves in the tree. This is an optional step, but it also provides some really pretty bright color up in the sky area where it's kind of dark right now. So let's use our number four round brush and we'll use primary yellow and orange for this. 
and I'm going to do, actually let's use the detail brush. Mix orange and yellow together. And we're just gonna do basic leaf shapes with the orange and yellow. And I'm just gonna add them to my tree branches. Little leaf shapes. If you wanna do dots instead, you can. I'm just, some of the branches have two on the end, most of them have one. You can add little leaves that are not on the tips of the branches. You can add them kind of like on the side of a branch. You can have some falling. Later on, I'll paint some on the ground. So you can do as many leaves as you want for this step. And next, I'm gonna do stars in the sky. So for the stars, I'm gonna use the detail brush and I'm just gonna hand paint these in. We could have splattered stars earlier in this painting with like a toothbrush, but now it's too late to do that. Um, but basically, just painting little clusters of white dots all throughout the sky. If you wanna paint more elaborate twinkle diamond shaped stars, you can do that. And then I'm going to do the little um, details on the witch hat. So I did titanium white. This is the also the detail brush, the little band, and then paint this purple after painting it white. Some more dioxazine purple. You can change the color of this. It kind of blends in with the background. So a green would have helped it to stand out a little bit better, or even a yellow or orange. And I'm also gonna do a little bit of highlighting for this. So rinse, dry. One thing you gotta keep in mind with these detail brushes, or pretty much any brush, you wanna dry it. Make sure you're wiping the metal part of the brush so your water isn't dripping down and pooling after you load it in the color. So there's a little bit of highlight on the top right part of the witch hat. Then I'm gonna add shadow under the ghost. So decided on shadow after our all, but a little bit below. So it almost makes it look like she's kind of floating. And then we have bats. So for the bats, I used Mars Black and the detail brush. If you don't wanna do bats in this because it's too much detail, you can take the bats out, skip the bats, or add more bats. So I do like a little circle with cat ear sort of shape thing. And then curve, and then two to three scalloped lines on the bottom of the wings. And same thing on the right side. Three curved scalloped lines, and then fill it in solid. This is also something you can do with a paint pen. So I'm gonna do another bat somewhere else in the sky. Same exact technique, starting with the head and the two little ears and then the wings. And then two little dots for the eyes, which can also be done with a toothpick. The black is not dry all the way. I also did not rinse my brush either, but I'm gonna be really careful. So two little white dots for the eyes. I'm going to also add like a little flower thing to the hat, making these like little petal shapes with the white. 
it's turning purple because that purple isn't dry yet. And I'm going to rinse and add two little white dots to the ghost. This is an optional step. I'm going to do one little white dot and a smaller one. And I'm going to do this on both of the eyes. Give it kind of that bubble eye cute look. And the final thing I'm going to do to this is add leaves on the bottom. So we can do this with the four round or the little detail brush. But I'm just going in with the orange and white and doing little leaf shapes kind of scattered all throughout the ground area. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint Halloween friends. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me. Bye.